Hi everybody, it's Agnes. Welcome to a interview. Today it's with Judith. Judith interviewed me and now I'm interviewing her. Hello Judith. <laughs> Hi Agnes, thank you so much for having me. Good, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank I, you so much for having someone, me. Yes. Someone in the cafe good. is talking to you. <laughs> He was like, do you want a cold latte or you want a hot one? It's summer where I am, so yeah. I'm having a latte. Lovely. Can you get me one too? I feel like a possum that's been knocked out of a tree this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, coffee, wait on yes in the morning. I mean, I'm sure so many people out there are like, yes. Exactly, exactly. So just so people know, where are you? where are you? What country are you in? Where are you from? Hi, so well, um, I am actually, I was born and raised in Holland, but yeah. I currently live in Santiago, Chile, uh, South America, and yeah. I've been living here for the last, last six years, and I've been moving around quite a bit, so I was born and raised in Holland, I lived in Spain and studied there for a while, and I lived in Curacao for quite a while, uh, which is in the Caribbean, gorgeous oh. island. Wow. Yes, really cool. Yes. And I'm, yeah, six years in Chile and probably, I think, the end of this year, beginning of next year, we'll be moving again. What, how come you move so much? Is it your husband's work? No, uh, I'm just an adventurous woman. <laughs> well, <Probably>. no. Um, <laughs> well, actually, when I moved to Spain, it was because I wanted to study there and work there, yeah. uh, which I did. It was really like an exchange program kind of thing, and I uh, had a part-time job there. And then I went back to Holland. And then after a couple of years in Holland again, I went to Curacao which used to be colony of the Netherlands. And I have oh. lots of friends over there. And one of my friends was like, hey, want to come for a couple of months? And a couple of months turned out to be really good. And I stayed one and a half year until my mom got really sick and I went back to Holland. Um, and after that, I moved to Chile. <laughs> wow. that's And did you learn yeah. Spanish in Chile? Or you already knew Spanish? Well, uh, my dad is originally from Chile, and my mom was Dutch, um, and I learned some Spanish from my dad. Uh, not too much, because my parents separated when I was really young, so I just learned a little bit, and then I moved to Spain, and I improved my Spanish, and I yeah. came to Chile, and I learned to improve wow. my Spanish. nice. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And you speak two languages? Uh, three. Three. What's the third one? Yeah, because, oh, uh, English. Dutch. Well, that, yeah, Dutch. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dutch, English. Dutch, Spanish, English, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cool. That's so. great. Brilliant. Brilliant. So good to speak different languages. It really helps. It is. Around. Yeah. And also with the coaching, I think sometimes yeah. it's weird though to, to, to switch between languages. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm looking for the right words and especially with the law of attraction <laughs> terms. I'm like, this yeah. just sounds weird when I say it in Dutch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I, I find like, because I'm doing everything in English, if someone asks me to coach them in French, I speak fluent French, but it's knowing the words and the terms of that yes. you know, attraction thing that I don't think I'd have access to because I've never actually spoken French law of attraction. <laughs> never spoken. Right. Oh yeah. my gosh. I, because the thing is my, uh, my coaching, um, course that I, the law of attraction coaching course that I did was in English. Yeah. And books that I've been reading have been in English yes so then when I started coaching uh, I started coaching people also in Dutch because you know I have some people in Holland and excellent so and here, so, which is really cool but it's confusing sometimes and the first couple of sessions I was like mm, I actually had to take some notes mm. uh, with the words and you know certain techniques yeah. you know because it just felt yes. a little bit off it just fell off really yeah but yeah I got the hang of it and yeah that was, lovely. It worked. <laughs> lovely so can you tell the viewers where and how you began this journey of law of attraction and manifesting for yourself oh yes so uh for me my journey actually started when i just moved to barcelona and my ex-boyfriend he gave me the book you can heal your life by louise k which of course you know yeah uh, which for me was a game changer. It was really um, very interesting. As you know, Louisa Hay was really, 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 really big on self-love. Yeah. Um, affirmations, 
you know, she talked a lot about how to treat yourself, how to talk about yourself. And I don't know, it, there was something about this book that I couldn't let go. And at the time, I was really, really into clubbing. You know, I was working a study, and I was also clubbing a lot. Yeah. But what happened, I got the book, and I couldn't wait to go back home and read my book. And I just carried it around like a little Bible, and I you know, taking notes, writing the affirmations, because every chapter, each chapter had uh, affirmations. So the abundance chapter had affirmations about um, uh, abundance. And then, you know, the chapter about love had affirmations about love. And I was completely, I got completely obsessed with it. So that's how it started. And this is, um, I must have been 23, which is, I don't know, just a couple of years ago. Uh, <laughs> 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 like, 14 years, 13, 14 years ago. So this was the first book, very influential to me. And I just became obsessed with that idea of like, wait a minute, if I can change my life with the way I speak, with the way I think, I can create amazing things. Yeah. And it was like, it was just mind blowing to me. But at the same time, it made a lot of sense because I know people that read Louisa, like, hey, you can leave heal your life. And they were like, oh, it's a little bit woo. And I never had that. I was like, no, this actually makes sense. You know, yeah. self-love, self-care, good thoughts, good deeds, good words. And it just made so much sense to me. So that was the beginning of my journey. And then, of course, I became completely really obsessed with Louisa Hay. And I think it was shortly after that that The Secret came out. Um, which was really interesting to me. And then, of course, there were a couple of teachers that really resonated for me, like Abram Hicks, yeah. uh, Michael Backwood. I really like Michael Backwood. I actually went to see him a couple of times. Minor crush, maybe. Mm. <laughs> I thought he was so interesting. And I still think he's very interesting, very captivating yeah. Yeah. speaker, very interesting guy. And Abram Hicks really, really resonated with me. Um, so that's how it starts, like one book led to another book, to another book, and to a YouTube video, and another video, and another video. So that's how it started. And here we are today. <laughs> and was, and think, was that what, in, what inspired you to become a coach as well? Well, uh, not yet. So this was uh, Barcelona. I went back to Holland, and I started... I worked in corporate for quite a few years. And yeah. when I worked at Unilever, I don't know if you know this company, yes. but I worked at Unilever and I was actually offered the opportunity to work with a life coach, uh, company paid. So that was an awesome possibility nice. opportunity for me. So that was really nice. And I was like, well, first of all, this was a very, very nice man. Like amazing, very charismatic, great speaker. And it was just like, just pleasant to be around him. He was a great life coach. And I was like, wow. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that nice to be able to help people like that? And it wasn't yeah. like shocking or anything, but you know, just handing me the tools and the, the techniques that he used. And I was like, wow, I was just so interested. So I think, you know, it was definitely um, uh, a seed planted at the time. So I started reading. I kept reading, like, you know, I kept working in corporate and I moved around a little bit. Um, but I kept reading about law of attraction. I went to yoga. Uh, to, sorry, I, went to, I went to India to study more yoga. I to learn more about meditation and breathing techniques. I actually became a certified, a certified yoga teacher as well wow. <laughs> on my journey. Yes, that was uh, in Goa, India. Also, very cool experience. And um, I remember I kept going back to the idea of becoming a life coach because I thought, wow, how amazing to help people and to give them, you know, this guidance and these mm, tools. Mm. But, but, because, but because I learned so much about law of attraction, it's like you can't really go back anymore. Yeah. Right? As in, you cannot unlearn these things. So I was like, but how do I do this? How would I bring those two together? Because there's tons of life coach trainings out there, but I really, yeah. really wanted to become a law of attraction life coach. So, yeah. you know, use, use the uh, Abram Hicks techniques and, you know, uh, the new story or living in the end, you know, the things that Mel was talking about. Mm. And then I finally found a course that had all of that because, you know, obviously it's one thing to learn as much as you can about law of attraction and the pride in your own life. Because I think especially as a coach, you get, you know, you got to walk your talk. Yeah. So 
one thing to know these things, but it's a whole other thing to become a life coach yeah. and to implement all these tools and techniques and uh, guide your client through these processes, mm. but also teach them to them so they can use them, you know, by themselves. Yeah. So I finally found that course and yeah. That's how I became. A Judith, of can you yeah. tell can you tell the viewers what course you did? Because a lot of people ask me, and I don't really have oh, yes. you know a course that I can recommend that has all of that. So which course was okay? It? This is the QSCA, the so Quantum Success Academy by Christy Whitman. Okay. And this this is a life coach training specifically for law of attraction life coaches. Right. And so is it, this it's online. It's all online. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know when they're starting a new course. I think it's every quarter they start a new course. Maybe, you know, the, the requirements might have changed. If anybody's interested, I'll be happy to share more information. Yeah. But I thought it's really good. Um, you know, actually, you know, you have to read Abram Hicks, the books of Abram Hicks. And I was like, is this my homework? This is like the best homework I've ever had. I already read it, but I'll do it again and again and again. <laughs> and I'm like, yes. This is great. Like, sorry, husband, I gotta go do my homework. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. So it was really awesome. And, you know, um, they taught us, uh, you know, uh, guided meditation. So this is, I mean, this is really for people that are really into the whole spiritual world, you know. So yeah. this is really, you know, breathing exercises, meditations, yeah. uh, clarity through contrast, uh, which thoughts feels better, 68 seconds, uh, desire statement so like all these tools so you learn these tools and how to implement them um in your session so i think it's lovely i think it's pretty good yeah yeah it was really good and it's um the classes are like there's a class every week so you also have that accountability you know mm. to check in and i thought it was pretty Fabulous. good and I they did great. and they did neville as well within the course no, Neville was not. No, they didn't really talk about Neville that much. It was, it was more, more Esther. Eggs. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's still great, yeah, isn't absolutely. it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't know if there's a, a coaching course based on Neville's. So maybe that's no. something you should no maybe there's something you should be doing <laughs> oh i just think our dear neville i mean esther i love esther too i think she's just her yeah. body of work is amazing but yeah it's good when you can get a course that combines all these things well. yeah That's yeah because really i was really i was really struggling with that and for a while i was like well maybe i should just do like a life coaching course and then figure it out but this was definitely better for me because it's like okay this is how you put it together and it's really really awesome yeah um beautiful to guide people through these processes yeah yeah that's good okay so once you're on the timeline mm -hmm. you you did the course and where what country were you in at the time in chile you were in chile yeah, when you started it and you how long was your yeah. course, how long was the coaching course you it's, did it's one year one year yeah mine was a year too. it's one yeah it's one yeah. year and it was one class a week and then you have like little get-togethers with your yeah. study group and then you have little get-togethers with your mentor yeah uh i actually did an interview with my mentor as well yeah really nice to talk to yeah it was really awesome um so you know you have to do your coaching hours you have to yeah some you have to report some of your coaching um, yeah. sessions for feedback. So, you know, they'll tell you like, okay, mm. uh, what do you think you did good? Where can you improve? So I think it was, you know, it was a lot of self-reflection, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I, I thought it was really good. Yeah. yeah I really, sure. really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. And okay. So you, once you did that, what, like what was going on in your, if you want to share, what was going on in your own life that you were looking to change or manifest or make it better? What was going on at that time? Well, what happened um, is that there was, you know, me and my husband, we've been working together and we have our own company and we've been doing quite well. Yeah. Uh, thank God. But I kept having that nagging feeling, right? Like, you know, something is missing, something is missing. And, you know, what really sparks joy in me is to talk and teach about law of attraction so yeah. that kind of inspired me to take the course and because i did the course and because i have like this accountability from ev of every week and doing my written assignments you know a lot of magic started happening uh you know financially yep. definitely because i became you know i was more focused i was you know i started i was more conscious of my own thinking creating better relationships creating yep. a nicer environment for me to live in um also definitely some certain relationships started shifting 
Yeah. If that makes any sense, because, you know, I became a lot more aware of my own behavior, but mm. also sometimes having the tendency to get a little bit too involved in other people's problems. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, <laughs> yeah. let's not get into that but um yeah i think i think that's so powerful of working with a coach because you know during the program you also work with a coach yeah it's like having that accountability because there's so many self-help books out there which I yeah. think are amazing but what i think is missing in a lot of these books is actually having that partner that accountability partner or in our case a coach yeah it's like okay so what are you committing to and you know looking back at you know the last week or the last two weeks and because i had that during the course mm. there was there was no more excuses and it's nice to see that now also with clients it's like okay so how's it been what have you been up to for the last two weeks yeah. like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you know um you know people some people need a little bit more of encouragement than others but i think so powerful if you have a coach that you really click with yeah i mean you can make you can make magic happen right for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah because you, i know you also, can you yeah. tell tell us um what what business have you got going with your husband what what are you into oh yeah so um we actually are into real estate okay investment so buying land selling it but selling land buying properties flipping yeah. So that's what we're, that's what we love. And you're that's doing that business. just in Chile? You're not doing it in other places, other countries? No, for now in Chile, yeah. Yeah, beautiful, Chile. beautiful. Nice. Yeah, it's really, yeah, it's really nice. Love yeah, it. and that's the thing because it, it, it felt kind of weird because I really, really like it and I'm still, I still get excited about it. Yeah. But it's not my sole purpose. Yeah. It's not, it's not what I feel when I coach. It's not what I, you know, it's not yeah. something I get when I talk about law of attraction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good. At least your husband's doing that with you. So he, you know, he can do, you've kind of got your, your, you've got two irons in the fire and he's probably. Yeah. And we got, yeah, we actually created like a tiny little team. I think since, yeah, there was actually at the end of last year, they were like, okay, maybe we can start paying someone to do certain things for us. So yeah. we can create some space for other, other things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So, yeah, oh, that's it's good. good. That's good. What do you think is one of your highlight manifestations for, just for you in your own life? My husband. <laughs> <laughs> really? I swear. I mean, that was, I think that was like deliberate creation. Uh, yeah. All the way. Yeah. Really. I did all of it. It's like, check, check, check. <laughs> what did you, what did you, what parts of the law of attraction did you apply? Okay, so uh, first, it was December 31st. <laughs> we went out to put some fire, you know, we were, how do you say that? Put the fireworks out? or Yeah. So, I don't know how to say that. And I declared, I am meeting the man of my dreams, the man that I will marry yeah. this year. Nice. And I will meet him around the summer. And why around the summer? Because I was being single and I was loving it. I was really having a good time, which I think is really, really important. There was yeah. no whining. There was no pushy. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, I was really happy. I was, you know, having fun with my friends. I was having fun with my family. I was traveling by myself. I had a great job. Um, so I declared. First, yeah. I declared. I said, when? I actually wrote a profile. Yeah. He will look more or less like this. He loves to travel. He loves beach lifestyle. He speaks several languages. He's yeah. Warm. He has a beautiful heart, an amazing soul. He loves music. And, yeah. you know, I wrote this whole thing. I wrote the whole thing down. So, um, fast I wrote, forward. I wrote, I wrote the same list as you. We, it's amazing we didn't end up with the same man. <laughs> What's his name? What's his name? Where is he right now? I mean, you're traveling around. Maybe he doesn't know. <laughs> both into brunette, so who knows? Oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, so that was, I mean, you know, doing just a profile. And the thing is, I was having so much fun. So yeah. I, did the, I did the profile. I did the declaration. I did the vision board. 
um, fast forward, this was December and a fast forward to September, September, I mean summer, end of the summer, I meet this guy uh, in Barcelona. I went back to Barcelona to visit some friends. We went out partying. I didn't really feel like it. My girlfriend was like, come on, we're in Barcelona. Let's go out. Like, okay, I'll go. And I was dancing. I was having fun. And he walked in. And he was like, <laughs> And the funny thing is, I remember joking to my friends about, I'm going to meet my husband. And we're going to be lying under the Christmas tree at my mom's house yeah. this Christmas. And that's exactly how it happened. And I did all these little things. I'm trying to remember. But before I met him, I remember cleaning out my closet. Yeah. Because I was like, hey, wait a minute. It's almost summer. I need to make space for this guy. There's this full of stuff. Where is he going to stay? So I started creating space, like emotionally, but also physically, like emotionally, yeah. you know. Yeah. saying goodbye to certain things, letting go of old relationships because, you know, sometimes it's like there's a little bit left there. Yeah. So um, I remember cleaning out my closet. Uh, I remember buying lingerie because, you know, my man was coming. I actually wrote him love letters. I was telling a friend, I swear to God, I was writing him love letters before I met him. Love you know about about you know how how much I loved him and what I was gonna bring to him in the relationship. Wow, because I think that's, you nice. know that's something I think people forget a lot about. That it's like, well, I want you to give me and you yeah. to give that to me, and it's also like, okay, so what are you bringing to the table? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So and I wrote, I don't know, God knows how many love letters I've written <laughs> to him. That's but, a really good um, idea. That's such a, I've, I yeah. haven't heard that for a long time. That's a really good idea. What am I giving to the relationship? Not what am I trying to get from it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that was an interesting uh, manifestation. And my best friend, who's also my law of attraction, soulmate, yeah. yeah. she just, you know, she did the same thing with her husband. She's like, I still see us sitting there at the kitchen table, writing it down and talking about this, about her husband. And she also created the most beautiful, magical relationship. She has an amazing husband. This guy, I mean, this guy is amazing. Yeah. They have a beautiful baby girl right now. So, you know, yeah, I know, I, I mean, I know we can create whatever we want to our lives. We really can. You know, yeah. so, and you know, besides that financial success, business success, um, yeah. I, you know, that's all great. of it, you know, we can have it all. I really, yeah. I really believe that we can have it all. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I think it's just continually letting go of your old beliefs and be, having that real, like you said, I just wrote down what I wanted and I expected to get it. Yeah. And you know what I think, because I've seen this with friends as well, with girlfriends. I remember having this girlfriend. Oh, I still have her. She's still my friend. And she was really, she really wanted to meet that guy. And she's like, oh, I want to meet him. When is he coming? Is it this one? Is it that one? I should be calling him. Should I text him? I was like, girl, let it go. Let it go. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like it's easy to say when it's not you, right? Yeah. Letting go, is because tr it's tricky to let go when you... You think I want, I want something go. so hard. Yep. I want it so hard. <laughs> and what happened at some point, she kind of found her rhythm and she was having a blast. She was going on a vacation with her sister, was going out with her friend. She was really, really enjoying herself and she still wanted her man and she still knew what she wanted. But she focused on all the amazing stuff that was going on in her life in that moment. And of course, is that's when he appeared. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. they're also really happy. They created this beautiful family. But um, I think that's where a lot of people stumble. You yeah. know, it's like they can't see it yet. They can't feel it. And I think that's, you know, um, people struggle finding that feeling place. And, and then not, releasing. not enjoying that moment prior to a manifestation, which is the reason the manifestation doesn't come because you're still... I'm not happy until I get that. I'm not happy until I get that. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. and you need to be happy now. Yeah. You know, you have, you know, you got to find something to be happy about. Yeah. That moment. You know, it might not be your love life, but you might have an amazing career yeah. or you might have these amazing friends. It's just about 
finding that feeling and then tapping into that and yeah. that's where you're going that's going to be your fuel you know yeah like, that's the way i see it it's like you yeah. tap into the feeling and that's what you use to create that feeling and amplify yeah oh that's great it's so true it's really just enjoying your life your moment your week your month your year yeah in, in the meantime it's you've got to stop seeing it as it's this oasis in the desert you know it isn't the oasis mm. because you if you see it as the oasis and you happen to meet somebody you're going to bring in all the you need to love me so i can feel good for the relationship to continue because you set it up like that in the beginning so yeah that person's going to run away from you at some point because they get they will get yes. sick of it <laughs> you and i coach like, a lot of people they do get sick of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um yeah i don't know why why that is it's like i think especially women can get a little bit needy and what i see a lot is like let's say that this yeah. re represents this is my happiness and we're in a relationship i'm yeah. gonna hand it over to you yeah. this is yours now yeah and it's your responsibility to yeah. take care of this little of my happiness <laughs> you yeah. know it's like you have to make me happy i feel bad you need to fix it mm. you need to appreciate me you need to love me and it's like okay that's all these are good things to know you know that you want all of that but yeah. what are you bringing to the table are you still bringing the love the joy the gratitude appreciation yeah i agree and you keep that going you don't drop the ball you've got to continually say how can I make myself happy? And the thing is, that's one of the greatest things you can give in a relationship is you being happy and you being in a wonderful state emotionally. Men are attracted to, yes, physical shape or form, mm. but they're mm -hmm. equally, I think, attracted to someone who's emotionally secure. Oh, yes. Not, crea not creating dramas all the time. Yeah, no, wanting, that's exhausting. Yeah, and not wanting to talk about the relationship. You know, well, let's talk about our relationship. Women, <laughs> let's analyze it one more time. <laughs> let's go over the problem one more time. <laughs> that's what we, yeah, right. we do. We do that naturally. Women, especially, do that naturally. I think men are a bit more balanced and together around that. They just want to get on with it. You know, yes, it's not, yeah, all, yeah, yeah. not all men, but I told you, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I told you I'm sorry. Can we move on now? <laughs> Can we move on now? Let's enjoy the day. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, like, I mean, I have a lot more, you know, I have quite a few girlfriends. And I, I think, I think it's quite common to, you know, have the other, you know, want the other person to make us happy. But I yeah. think... You know, once we realize our happiness is really our responsibility. Yeah. It's so freaking empowering. Yes. You know, and liberating as well. It's like, yeah. you know what? I do me. I do me. And I got this. <laughs> yeah, I got this. And that's what makes a woman attractive. Yeah. Whether you're in a gay relationship or heterosexual, if you're in that place of what you just said, you are so much more attractive to somebody else. They will feel yeah. this pull towards you because you're making yourself happy on a daily basis. And you do yeah. forget sometimes and you slide back into your old manners, but you go, hang on a minute. Ah, oh, I haven't done anything to make myself happy. I haven't done enough self-love. And then you get back on the horse and then you get that real, that joy of life comes back. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that whole self-care thing, I think, um, you know, in the media, you know, self-care, what's self-care? Well, buying yourself chocolate or yeah. uh, having a drink with a friend, which, you know, can be parts of it. But I, you know, when I think mm. of self-care and I'm pretty sure you're on the same level, I think about affirmations, meditation, yeah. uh, scripts, time for yourself. You yeah. know, Michael Beckwith said it so well, learn to become still. Yeah, so I love that. I was like, in this busy world, this crowded world, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Zoom, and whatever. Like, yeah, learn to become still and yeah. create your own joy. And uh, do that every day. Make that a daily practice. And I think yeah, yoga, I would throw in yoga with that because yoga is very much about you come back to yourself. I mean, you would know that just doing yoga and loving your body 
letting yeah. yoga is a really great i find letting go surrendering yeah, absolutely. be still in yeah. a pose and it does bring up yeah. negative emotion yeah absolutely absolutely i do have to admit that when i became a mother it was very challenging for me to find that balance again because before i had the kids mm. i was like you know what i'm gonna sit down and meditate for 30 minutes or i'm gonna do yoga for an hour yeah you know i would script the script and script and i would play around with my vision board for hours and hours but obviously you know then i had a newborn and then i had another newborn yeah i you know i had to shift gears there and that i have to admit was quite challenging for me because yeah. i couldn't do it in the way that i knew that worked for me but i couldn't make that work because i just didn't have hours and hours yes. of days Yes. All of these things. So I had to find these little moments. I call them my stolen moments. Yeah. It's like doing the dishes. I do the dishes and clean up the kitchen in the evening when everybody's sleeping. And I do my affirmations. Like, yeah. <laughs> nice. Because, nice. Yeah, because I think, you know, life changes and there's all these new experiences yeah. and you kind of have to find a way to bring, you know, still take care of yourself. I think it's yeah. such a trap for a lot of women, you yeah. moms especially. Yeah. To follow the wagon. Yeah. 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 Look, I can't imagine. I don't have children, so I can't imagine how hard that would be. I mean, mothers are amazing jugglers and multitaskers. It's incredible. But you do, like you say, you still need to find the moments, even if it's when you're doing the dishes or unloading the dishwasher or whatever. You still got to find those moments. Yeah. Because I noticed that like, at some point, like with everything that I've learned, I would get tired, cranky, borderline resentful even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, red flag. I need to chill. I need to, you know, journal for 20 minutes. It's yeah. like, it's, it's non-negotiable. Yeah. You know, you got to find some time for yourself. You really do. Even, you know, you have a busy career, you have a couple of kids, you need to find some time every single day for yourself. Yeah. To stay on track. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, you've escaped your family to do this interview with me today. Your little apartment of escape. <laughs> I actually, I just, I ran out of the house. I'm in the cafe. Yeah. I got my coffee here. You know, it's uh, my stolen moment. <laughs> exactly. I like the music yeah. and I can hear I, it, the music in the background. <laughs> Everybody's invited to the party. That's great. So, so, I'm in Santiago. You're in the desert of Australia. I'm like, Oh yeah, this is lots of fun. Party for two, Judith. Party for two. You were great. Party for two. Yeah. Well, anything else that you want to talk about that you think is important to share, like about your personal journey, what you really learned, mm -hmm. as was the top sort of things you go back. Um, to? What are the things you really go back to again and again and again that really work? Finding a feeling place. Yeah. Finding the feeling place. So whenever I want to call something into my life, I know that for me, finding the feeling place is key. Yeah. Because I remember doing affirmations frantically. Like, <laughs> I got this amazing job and I would feel like all this resistance. And I would like, God damn it, this is a good affirmation. Why does it feel so wrong? You know, and then over time I learned it has to feel good. It has to feel good to you. Yeah. Because... You know, there's people saying, oh, you got a script and you got to read it three times a day at this time of day because that's how it works. I'm like, no, that's not it. It has to feel good to you. Yeah. It has to feel right to you. to you. And if you feel resistance, like that weird feeling in your stomach, your belly, you don't, you shouldn't just listen to it. You got to obey that. It's like, yeah. it's there for a reason. It's telling you back off, back yeah. off. Mm. Take, you know, you don't have to take five steps back, but yeah. take one step back. Yeah. And um, I think that's, for me, the most important thing, finding the feeling place. And I see that also with clients. It's like, yeah. and then the next question is like, well, what, what, it, what does it feel like to feel abundant? We talked about them in our previous conversation, or what yeah. does it feel like to be in that amazing relationship? It's like you find something you're happy with right now. Yeah. And that's the feeling that you got to tap into. Yep. And sometimes, I mean, last week I was talking to a client. I said, well, close your eyes. Let's go back into time. When was the last time you felt powerful and amazing? And she's like, well, it's a long time ago. So it doesn't matter. That's the feeling we got to tap into. It's like you, yeah. kind of, you kind of have to replicate that feeling. And that's what yeah. you're going to build on, right? Yeah. yeah. And you call it, I think you, you mentioned finding a back door. 
you know, and I usually refer to it like going back into time and finding that moment where you feel yeah. good. So, yeah, definitely finding the feeling place of it and um, self worth. Yeah, I think that's also, I think that's a big one. That's something I struggled with in the past quite a bit. Yeah, uh, very common, very common amongst most women. Yeah, I work with like you know not believing or kind of feeling guilty for wanting certain things. I notice there's a lot of that as well. Yeah. I want that, but I feel guilt or shame around that. Mm. Um, do you think, do you think men have that too? No. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree with you. I don't think they do. Not as like, it's like for us, it's like a, I don't know, like a sickness we've got. <laughs> I think, you know, um, I think, I don't know if I can actually say that. Um, I think as women, we tend to overanalyze our emotions a lot. Yep. And men don't, I, I haven't found a man that really does that. If I'm like, no. oh, okay, moving on. And, and that's not a complaint or a criticism. I just, I just don't think that men work that way. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I also think that's something women can learn from is yeah. we, do, we do spend a lot of time analyzing our emotions and we, we stay stuck in gazing at our own navels too long, I think. <laughs> yes. It's like, why are we still talking about this? I know. Let's like, go, go out and have a swim. Go and dance. Go and listen to some music. Have some fun. Get <laughs> off it. <laughs> And then you just, yeah. you just rise back up in good feeling. Like you talking about the feeling place. That's an easy way to get it. Yeah. 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 I think that, and um, yeah, like I said, guilt. Guilt, shame around what, what it is that we want to have. Um, I struggled with that years ago quite a bit uh, because I really had this idea of creating this financially abundant life I, you know i don't come from money I, I didn't grow up poor but i didn't come from a lot of money either yeah yeah and you know like almost feeling ashamed about wanting what i want yeah um and i actually remember this time that i was i was living in in the caribbean and i went to another island with a friend and we booked this five-star hotel and spa treatment and it was all good it was wonderful and i was on with facebook and i was talking to money this later and i just felt got sick you know i didn't i don't think i even told my friend at the time yeah but and i was like what and what is this you know and i realized i was feeling guilty i was feeling ashamed how could i you know treat myself on this while somebody in my family is suffering you know so there was a couple of those um yeah. moments and then i realized like but by thinking this i'm blocking myself in more abundance that shame is pushing it away i'm feeling guilty i'm pushing it away I need to work I have to find a way to work around that yeah um, and I see that also also with a lot of women I, I work mainly with women to be honest yeah uh, you know having the career having the partner having the kids but I also want the big car and it's like hey girl you want what you want <laughs> like I'm not here to judge you yeah and <laughs> you know <laughs> so um, yeah but I yeah, but it's a good okay. question about me. Judith. How did you just looking at the mechanics of that? How did you go from letting that go to being okay, like letting go of the guilt or the shame or whatever that you had of things that you wanted? How did you actually personally do that? Um, well, a lot of soul searching because yep. I, I didn't understand, first of all, why I was feeling guilty because part of my brain was like, Come on, girl, you don't have to feel guilty, you work for this, and blah yep. blah blah. You know, there's just all that logic. Yeah. But then there was a guilt and a shame. So I started working on um, affirmations. I am worthy. Yeah. I have value. Yeah. So this is, you know, that was like, that was the beginning. I started working on that. Um, I did a lot of visualizations. And I yeah. remember somewhere reading the question, what does, um, what would happen? Let me just think about this. 
The question was, how does having money change your life for you? And how does it change the life of your loved ones? Ah. And then in that moment, I was able to zoom out and I was like, well, I will be able to provide myself and my family for this. And then also, you know, if I want to, I could provide my loved ones with this or that or this or that. Yep. Coming from a place of love and abundance, not lack, fear, and scarcity. Yep. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So this did not happen overnight. I think altogether this took quite a while because yeah. it was like on and off, on and off, on yeah. and off. So yeah. it was really, I really had to figure it out. Um, but yeah, you know, I think we can figure, we can work all these things out as long as we're willing to learn and willing to listen to ourselves and be really honest. Yeah. Especially honest about the negative beliefs you still hold. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because a lot of times, first of all, you're not even aware of the negative beliefs. And I was like, well, it's not that bad. It's like, well, it's holding me back. So it's not serving me anymore. You know? Yeah, exactly. Can we, at least, can we at least agree on that? It's not yeah. serving you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> oh, yeah. wonderful. Wonderful. It's so wonderful doing this work with people. It's it a, is. It's it a real really gift. is. It's a real gift and, and it shows you a lot about yourself. You know, like I always go, okay, when I'm working with someone, they are me pushed out. Why do I keep hearing this? What is it I need to dissolve within myself that I, you know, so it's like if you're yeah. losing, using your clients as they are you pushed out, you have got to continue to say they are my mirror as well, you know, so it's dissolving oh, the yes. parts of you that create them. Asking that, that's what I think oh, yes. is interesting. Yeah, it's, oh gosh, it's amazing. I mean, just, it's just such a journey to work as a life coach, I feel. It is. All these different people, because like you said, it's all, they're all like little mirrors, right? Yep. They are. <laughs> all, your, they are. all your clients. And, you know, for those who are, who are coaching or are interested in coaching, you know, it's going to be, um, you have to be open to learn. Yes. And to learn them. And, um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. But <laughs> That's all right. You thought I was going to say something really deep and profound. profound. Yeah, I, I was waiting. <laughs> I was waiting. I was on the edge there. Here yeah. it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. No, but it's true, no, it's true, Judith. It is um, when you take on this career or work, yeah. meaningful work, it, it is very much you're not going to be sc scooting over the surface and not looking at your own issues as you're coaching no. because your issues are going to come up in other people. Yeah. And yeah. And I think constantly working on deeper levels of self love, deeper levels of self worth as a coach, you're constantly, those are the two things at the base root, I think of it all. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I also think like being a coach, you got to have your own coach. It's like, it, it doesn't stop there. You know, yeah. it's like, you got, you have yeah. to stay on track and uh, also to be able to reflect, you know, your personal stuff, but also your coaching. Yeah. Um, because yeah. I don't know if that ever happened to you, but I've had like one client in particular that was like, oh, she really got under my skin. And I was like, what is this all about? You know, yeah. and I really had to, I really had to talk to somebody else because like, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't know how to deal with it. And to be honest, I even got a little bit frustrated, Yeah. which, you know, you can't be. And, you know, for those who want to become coaches, like keep working with your own coach. Like, yeah, you got to learn, you got to stay open. You got to keep learning and reading and yeah, uh, listen to people. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. Was it you that said listening is loving? I don't know. Somebody said, Somebody said that it was like, I think it was on YouTube and I love that so much. Yeah. Listening is loving because Listening. I think there's, because that's another thing I've been seeing since I started coaching. There's so many people out there and you look on their Facebook and their Instagram I'm like, Oh, you know, they're, they look so happy, but then they're empty, you know, they're, you know, hungry for love and attention and a, yeah. actual, a real conversation, yeah. a real human connection. Yeah. Human connection. Exactly right. It's so important. So important. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's like the one of the fibers of our basic makeup is we need connection. That's what separates us from other. I hey, used to live in tribes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, Judith, we've all as always. It's gone. The whole hour's just gone. Zip. <laughs> having way too much fun <laughs> i know it's great i just love it look it's just so good to talk to someone that does what you do and you just you know it, it's that that is it's so wonderful i'm gonna put your bits and pieces down below how people can contact you and absolutely thank you yeah and i'll put down the links of the stuff that we talked about i think i think the thing that's come out of this too was just you coaching in different languages because I know some countries say to me, I really need a coach, but my English isn't good. And if you've got Spanish and you've got um, du Dutch, 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 mm -hmm. e Dutch, English and Spanish, you, yeah. can, you can cover some extra ground. So yeah, yeah, no, it's really cool. And I, especially in Dutch, I have to be honest, like I haven't been coaching that much in Spanish. Sometimes I'm more like, oh, where's my notebook again? Yes. <laughs> But with the Dutch, I because I've been practicing quite a bit, and I actually have a few clients in Amsterdam right now, which is awesome. Yeah, it's <laughs> um, great. It's great. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really. Oh my gosh, it's really cool. Yeah. I really love it, coaching. You know, yeah. it's, and it's just to be part of somebody's journey like that. Yeah. It's so intimate. It can it's be wonderful. so intimate. But I I didn't realize that for some reason before I started coaching, but you can like not i you know you don't get close because obviously you you know you keep a healthy distance but like the things people sometimes share in their sessions like i know makes you very um feel very honored that people share it with you and that like you say you can be part of their journey and when you see them flourish it's like yeah. you know you're like a parent with a child watching it grow it's so exciting to see the yeah relief i mean we are in the relief business that's what we yeah. aim to help people with is for people to get emotional relief that's why they come to us so yeah, yeah. and Wonderful. do you do you work mainly with women or with men or both i work mainly with women but i do i'm getting more and more men over time and mm. yeah i it's i, I love i love both because you you definitely learn different parts of how each gender operates um i like working with you know and also people that are different gender as in they're not just heterosexual they're not just gay mm -hmm. i work with people that have other preferences of how they do their sexuality so i really love that it's not just a very conservative approach to people that just want to be man woman and get married it's, yeah that is one part of it but there are lots of different variations of that which i really enjoy i love yeah. i love that there's a well-roundedness of of people and different preferences that to me is what i wanted to do i don't want to work with just my own my own kind you know i want mm -hmm. to have that variety and and it's i love that i love that it's so that is so interesting to me yeah yeah because you get to see the world from a whole other from a whole other perspective yeah but the yeah. thing that i see you just don't see it before no that, right? the thing that i've learned from that judith is it doesn't matter what country what color what sexual preference it really is people struggle with the same things and it's about feeling loved about feeling good mm -hmm. enough and about feeling secure those are the mm -hmm. things people struggle with the most about yeah. who they are and culture co color um national even age you know from the from the 18s all the way up to the 60s and 70s people all struggle with the same stuff and there's a real uniting of of people yeah. because of that that's has surprised me that people around the world st struggle with the same stuff doesn't matter where they are isn't that crazy but it's like that's yeah it's just i've really been surprised slash shocked with how alone people feel yeah unheard unheard not loved, unheard not loved yeah unappreciated undervalued yeah. yeah and obviously a lot of it is like you know within themselves yes 
it's just, I mean, that's really been shocking to me. It's like, I hear people talk about, well, I don't know where to get clients. It's like, oh, there's so many people. I mean, obviously, you know, there's a variety of factors that you have to take into consideration, but um, I've been so surprised. And still, I'm like, wow. Yeah. How can, how can we be with so many of us and mm. feel so alone? Exactly. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yep. Mm. Yep. Good call. <laughs> Yay. Well, I won't, I won't ask you for a photo of you in your lingerie because I'm sure a lot of the men would have latched onto that comment. <laughs> Can't cut that off, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it just, uh, it just popped into my head. I thought, good for you. That's, well, that's part of it, isn't it? Enjoying. <laughs> yeah, I love that. When you said that, it made me giggle. I, I thought I have to come back to that. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like, I remember, but this, it was so funny when I was in that process. Like that, I, I mean, I can still go back and feel that joy. Yeah. I was just having a laugh. I was just having fun. I was like, I, I, told my best friends like I'm flirting with the universe I used, yeah. I used to say I'm flirting with you oh I got a little wink from the universe look at that oh that's for me and I it was just so much fun and that lingerie yeah it's a true story what can I say <laughs> oh it's great I love it love it love it love it well yeah, Judith so. thank you so much for no, popping you on so much. Um, well, do you want to say goodbye Friday. to everybody and then you and I can say goodbye in private? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for watching. I had a great time and I yeah. uh, hope to see you guys soon again. Lovely. Okay, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this interview and I will put Judith's details down below for those of you that would like to contact her. And as always, Judith, to be continued, we will see you in another, at some point, we will reunite yes. and continue on. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody.